Hello. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we? Are we good? Everyone, we're good. I think we're good. Can I get some thumbs up, y'all? Yeah. Um, Katie, wonderful to hear that you're feeling much better today. That's really great. Happy Monday, everyone. Um, Awesome, thanks Lauren, I appreciate it. Cool, so we are here, it is Monday. My name is Deborah Lee Smith. I am an actor and a producer here in sunny Southern California. And um, I'm here to talk today about anxiety. <laughs> Anyone else feeling anxious right now? Um, I mean, I know personally, Everything that I'm going to be talking about, of course, is from my personal experience. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background on me, on my mental health organization. Um, and then we're going to jump into some conversation about anxiety, the things that I use in order to get over anxiety, either on set or um, just in everyday life, because it all definitely intertwines. Um, I am always happy to answer any questions about my mental health organization more than you see, or about um, you know being in the entertainment industry. Hi from Mexico, welcome. Um, so just a little background about me. Um, as I said, I am an actor and a producer here in California, Los Angeles. Um, about two years ago, I had a um, really dark period in my life that led me to creating my organization, More Than You See. Um, this organization focuses on sharing vulnerable stories and tools, mental health tools that we can all use to um, get us out of dark places. I know that for me during that time, um, podcasts and going for walks with my dog were very, very valuable. They were the things that, you know, kept me going every day um, and honestly kept me grounded in reality and, and not spiraling into, um, into like further darkness. So for me, those were things that were very important. And as I was coming out of this period, I was talking to some friends of mine, also in the entertainment industry, who were also having difficulty with different things. And sometimes, you know, this is something that's really important to talk about is that there's sometimes no reason for that anxiety and that depression to set on you, you know, like it's not um, like I had friends who were, you know, weeks away from their wedding with their their husband who they were so excited to, you know, marry. And then they were had just booked roles on shows and everything was going right in their life. And yet they were still having, you know, this intense anxiety and depression that was settling on them. And having those conversations really made me realize how you know, valuable it is to share um, these stories and also make sure that people, you know, know that they're not alone. Um, I think that that was, that was very valuable to me during that time. And I know that it's been valuable to um, other people as well. So um, More Than You See, as I said, is a mental health organization. What it is specifically, um, and The Mighty is awesome, and they just shared um, 
So if you go to morethan-uc.com, that's our website. We also have an Instagram, um, more than underscore UC, and we do a lot of different things. For example, for Mental Health Month for May, um, I we reached out to people from all around the world, artists, who shared their own personal art and how that related to um, to their own mental health journey. So people were sharing, you know, really incredible, um, you know, like body tattoo art or paintings or short films or poetry, anything that spoke to their own internal struggles, we shared over on um, our Instagram. If um, if art speaks to you in any way, and as I said, there's a lot of different types of art, I strongly recommend that you go check it out. Um, we just had some incredible, uh, you know, submissions, and I think that I really felt, you know, connected with those people, um, and I think other, like you will as well, find that you really resonate with, um, with the art there. Um, yeah, so so Gabriel, let's we're gonna talk about that um, in a second. So Gabriel says my anxiety prevents me from moving up in the company that I work at, and um, so I, let's let's jump into that in a second. I'm just gonna um, finish giving a little background on more than you see, and then we're gonna start this conversation about anxiety and performance. Um, you've been drawing for thirty plus years. That's really incredible, Gabriel. If you would like to submit. So what I was just about to say is um, uh, with all of the very important conversations around Black Lives Matter that occurred um, over the past couple weeks, we actually had some more submissions that we've held off because we really wanted to give space to the important conversations that were happening. Um, and so we do have a little bit more art that we will be showing this week. Um, and then that will sort of wrap out that series. But again, next May, we will have another, um, you know, a digital art show for Mental Health Month, which is May. Um, we also do other things where, you know, people have been, um, yeah, thank you, Mohammed. He said it's very important to share your story that I completely agree. And that's exactly why I created More Than You See. You know, some of the other things that we've been doing is we've had a more than COVID-19 series where people are sharing about all of the things that they're experiencing beyond um, you know, COVID because yes, qu like quarantine and, you know, the, 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 uh, things that we're experiencing right now, they, they do, um, have a lot of importance, but there's also things that we're still experiencing in our everyday lives that are also highly important. Um, you know, like my, uh, yeah, there we go. Thank you, the mighty. So, um, they just shared, that's where you can go to um, check out the uh, digital art show. Um, so, you know, as I was saying, like, you know, people are still experiencing things through COVID that has nothing to do with COVID and it's still there. Um, I had a friend who, um, you know, came on and she shared how she is still maintaining her sobriety while being, you know, quarantined and how difficult that has been. Um, I had someone else who was talking about having her first child and how difficult that is, you know, in this time of quarantine. You know, so we really, we try to be um, really topical and, uh, you know, really bring light to really important things, but also just, our a general community where people can share their stories. And um, I'm just really excited because we're just, we're growing this community and I'm so grateful that I get to connect with you all here. So let's talk about, about anxiety, shall we? Oh man, guys, I have to say that um, the reason that I really wanted to talk about this is I have had so much anxiety when it comes to the world reopening um, and what that means for my career as an actor and a producer um, and what that means for just the general entertainment industry, what that means for LA. And I think that a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing are very much related, you know, to what um, you guys will be feeling, you know, as well. And no matter what, you know, whatever industry you're in, I think that there's a lot of anxiety that people are feeling about, you know, trying to get back to some semblance of normal. Um, and first of all, let's call out that everything that we've just gone through as far as quarantining, as far as, you know, losing family members um, or friends or, you know, anything like that, you know, all of the important discussions that have been happening, 
none of this is um, ever going to get us, you know, we're not going to, um, you know, go back to uh, where we were in February. And in a lot of ways, that's really good because we're all having really important, you know, discoveries about ourselves. Um, and that's very, very valuable. Um, OK, so John, um, John says that my anxiety at moment is struggling to cope with recovery from major in injuries after an accident in June um, that thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that, John. Um, I I personally can't speak to recovering from, you know, physical injuries, but I have to say that I think our brains are, um, you know, really uh adapt at 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 can like thinking that physical um you know uh danger and mental danger is the same and that's sort of one of the things that i want to start off with is the fact that when we're feeling anxious um you know there's a lot of different uh there's a lot of different reasons for that anxiety and the number one thing is that our body has put itself in fight or flight mode um you know when we are confronted with something that is scary that is putting us out of our comfort zone that may not be something that is you know our normal everyday life that immediately puts us into fight or flight and that is what um that is what anxiety is actually and so like you know obviously when you feel when you feel when you feel anxiety like what does that feel like it feels like you know your heart beats really fast sometimes it's irregular you know your your heartbeat is not beating the way that it, it should um you know similarly your breath will start to get really fast you may not be able to like catch your breath completely that's what you know like starts to cause anxiety and panic attacks um you know, you can feel dizzy, you can't eat, you know, all of those things are very important um, symptoms of the fact that your body is going into a state of fear and a state of fight or flight. So the number one thing, and this is why, um, this is why uh, meditation is so important for people, and I have to say, I need to be better about it, um, is that br breath, Focusing on your breath is the number one thing. I am not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I am an actor and I'm speaking from personal experience as well as the things that I read. But focusing on your breathing is the number one thing that you can do in order to calm panic attacks, calm anxiety. And one of the reasons for that is that it really forces your body out of that fight or flight to you know, sort of acknowledge and realize where your physical, you know, sense is um, right now. So, for example, um, if you are, um, so Dana says that um, her anxiety comes out of nowhere, no triggers, no trauma, um, no rhyme or reason. So that is 100%, um, you know, very much a, a actually a thing. Um, I would like to open up the idea that our um, anxiety does not necessarily need to be about what is physically going on around you right now. Um, you know, a lot of trauma is actually in our bodies. It is actually from past trauma. And that's something, you know, everyone has heard about where it's, um, you know, like, uh, you know, like your childhood trauma. Like that's a very uh, um, accepted and everyone knows about like the, the childhood trauma aspect of psychology. But I'd like to introduce a new thing. And that is the idea that your trauma could actually be not even related to your childhood trauma. It could be related to the childhood trauma that is stored in your DNA. And like, for example, there's been a lot of studies about this, but one in particular that has had some really incredible um, foresight. And this is what I'm this. I think, Dana, you'll find this really interesting. So um, there was a bunch of chickens that were raised inside cages in a in a lab. They had um, they had never you know they were raised from eggs. They had never been outside. They had never experienced any sort of trauma. They were you know fed. They had places to run around like all this stuff. And the scientists would go and they would you know come into the come into their room, um, you know talk to them, you know check on them, whatever, and would fly different shapes over their cages. 
So they would like cut out circles and fly it across the cage or squares or whatever. Um, and they did that for many months and the chickens never reacted to it. They never had any sort of yeah, reaction to those shapes. Then one day they, they cut out a picture of a hawk and um, put that over their, the cage and the chickens immediately started to freak out. They immediately, their bodies immediately went into fight or flight. These chickens, again, had never, they had no like recognition of the fact that that, that hawk was actually dangerous, but it was, it was rooted in their DNA. You know, so I think that that's something like as we're, you know, more understanding our brains and more understanding the parts of ourselves that are ingrained in us, I think it's really important to recognize that, you know, some of our trauma may not even be realized trauma. Um, it may be from something that a family member experienced that is actually rooted in your DNA. And again, I mean, this is, they're just, you know, they're doing a lot of research around this right now, but there's a lot of studies showing the same thing, which is really, you know, incredible. And I personally love, you know, hearing about studies like this because it, any sort of um, knowledge that helps explain my own anxiety and depression and, and, feelings that I have, I'm like, oh, great. It's so nice that I don't feel um, like my, like I'm alone and that those feelings are not warranted. Like I really love, you know, learning the science behind things because I think that it really, yeah, isn't that fascinating, Dana? Um, so, you know, I think that it, that something that has really helped me and one of the reasons also why I created More Than You See, my organization, is the fact that you never know what sort of tools are going to be the thing that catalyzes you and like pulls you out of the darkness. So for me, very specifically, I was walking my dog one day. I was um, just really in a really depressive state. I didn't know, you know, what my um, what my life was going to be. And I had a lot of, you know, really good career stuff going on, but it was just some personal stuff that really caused me a lot of pain. And I, um, I was listening to a podcast from, uh, uh, that had Zachary Levi on it, the actor. And he was talking about how he had gone through a very depressive state, um, you know, a few years before he shot Shazam. And he, this is someone who has had a lot of success. You know, he's been on Chuck. He's been on a lot of, um, you know, had a lot of notoriety as an actor. And and he admitting how he had gone through such a depressive state was really, really impactful to me. And I vowed when I was listening to that podcast that I would I wanted to do the same, that I wanted to speak about my experiences to try and, you know, encourage others that it does get better and that you're not alone, but also to introduce different, um, you know, tools. And so if you go to More Than You See, our focus is not necessarily, you know, traditional mental health resources. We do have, you know, links links to counselors, suggestions for how to find a good therapist, um, links to actually the mighty, you know, like different organizations that that do, um, you know, these sorts of really incredible mental health um, things. But the other stuff that we have is more non-traditional. And what I mean by that is like we have podcasts on there about brain function and how your brain works and why it works and and about addiction and and how you know your brain forms and how that relates to addiction and and books and TED talks that are you know sort of sidelines to traditional mental health resources because for me that has been what has been so valuable is is finding that knowledge and um, allowing that to be the thing that um, has really helped me through my darkest times. So um, something like that, Dana, that's, that's exactly why I created More Than You See. And um, we have a lot more you know, things like that up on our site. Um, so to go back to if you're feeling anxious, um, let's talk about what you do. So as I was saying, breathing is number one, the most important thing, because again, your body when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling depressed, your body is, um, or specifically anxiety, your body is in a state of fight or flight and your body doesn't know how to pull yourself out of it. So what you need to do is remind yourself 
that you are not in danger. Because again, just a little bit of science and background on this, our fight or flight was built because, you know, the cave people, excuse me, would, um, you know, they had saber tooth tigers attacking them and stuff like that. And so their brain synapses were formed when they were actually confronted with physical things that were charging at them. And that those brain synapses are still wired in our brain. That is what, you know, this DNA, like really deep stuff is still part of us. Um, and so it's really valuable if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling a panic attack, is to ground yourself, hold on to something physical, whether it is a, you know, a door, whether it is a wall, um, you know, I, I would recommend that you stay, you know, standing if possible, if not, absolutely sit on the ground. But the most important thing is to physically feel the things around you and remind yourself where you are. Look around you, remind yourself that you are in a safe space, that you are in your home, that you are in your, you know, place of work, you are in your car, you know, whatever like that. Um, and just take five deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth um, in order to just remind yourself that that just to slow your breathing down, slow your heart rate down. And, and by slowing everything down, it reminds you of, you know, where you are, um, and the fact that there is not a saber tooth tiger attacking you, that actually everything is okay. Um, so that's like the first thing. Obviously, if you are actually in a place where you are not safe, um, then you need to get out of that place. And obviously, I'm not here to, um, you know, like speak about, um, you know, violence or, you know, personal, like physical um yeah, violence or anything that that's going against you. Um, and this is this is about the the anxiety that we feel often for no reason. Um, I'm gonna. So Melissa said it's the reopening that has me more anxious now than when everyone was at home. At the same time, I want to go out there, but when I attempt to, I can't. Melissa, I hear you 100%. Um, it. You know, and I think that for me, it's been very valuable to sort of break down what the anxiety is and where it's coming from and, and what it's actually saying about myself. So, for example, I'll walk you through what I was feeling this weekend. So um, as an actor and a producer, um, but specifically an actor, as a producer, I can, you know, make my own work and and actually continue to further my career. I actually have a movie that I produced that came out last week, and it's been really amazing to support that film. I'm very proud of it, and it's just a really special film that has a very important message in it. Um, but, you know, besides that, my as an actor, I really have to put myself out there and have the gatekeeper sort of let me in. Um, and that's, you know, like the producers, the directors, the whomever that are going to, you know, invite me to play with them. Um, yeah. Isn't that fascinating, Dana? So, you know, to go back to this. So, for example, this weekend I was feeling and I, I still am. I can still feel it. I was feeling so much anxiety about the world reopening, the industry reopening um, in, in whatever sense it is and, um, and what that was going to mean for my career, what that was going to mean for my uh, schedule that I have now, you know, had like I, I actually sort of have a routine now in my, in my space and to then disrupt that routine again felt um, scary and completely um, something I was ill prepared for. So I uh, took out a journal and I wrote down for five minutes what the anxiety felt like, where it was in my body, um, because that is really valuable. You know, our, our bodies have different. Um, uh, relate, you know, relations like different different body parts relate to other 
other parts of your body. So, um, you know, for example, you know, our meridian lines, we've got a lot of different meridian lines that run through our body. That's what acupuncture is about. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of science behind how everything is connected, you know, through just our veins and all that sort of stuff. And depending upon where you're feeling that anxiety actually can relate to what what those feelings are so if you look up you can look up google like body maps and it'll show you you know if if your you know left side you're feeling more anxious what what that's relating to as far as emotions as far as other body parts any any stuff like that it's really fascinating um so for five minutes i wrote down you know what where this anxiety is um in my body and where it was coming from um and i realized that, you know, number one, I am anxious about, yeah, having another transition when I have, I am so good at um, building routines for myself and really succeeding. Like I am very focused on um, my goals. I've got big goals and I'm really focused on, you know, making plans in order to get to those goals. And this quarant like the quarantine ending in some sense, um, leads me completely out of control of what happens next. And that scares the out of me so much. And so I realized that for me, it was about lack of control. It was about um, not being able to determine my next steps. Um, and so I reminded myself about the things that I actually can control right now. Um, and that has been something that has been really valuable to me in the past, you know, four years or so when I've just really been doing a lot of um, mental health work. And that is to find my, um, find my purpose and find, find the things that I actually can control and to hold on to those things. Um, you know, for example, when I was, you know, really depressed, that's when I created More Than You See. Um, when the quarantine started, I was again, that was, you know, throwing into the quarantine. I had really big goals for this year. And to have all of my goals ripped from me, I was like, I just, that it really was difficult. And so from that, I decided to put on the digital art show over at More Than You See in order to, you know, give back to the community in some, in some sense and try and, you know, focus on art and focus on what I could control and what I could control was was helping others and um, trying to, you know, build, continue to build this, this beautiful community that I'm so proud of. Um, and so right now, this weekend, when I, you know, looked at everything, I thought, okay, now what can I control? I can control uh, my own decision to leave my house or not. I can control um, how I am prepared or unprepared for opportunities when they come. And I can, um, I can control, you know, my own uh, mental health like that is number one the most important thing and so for me you know really um focusing on having some sort of routine even if this routine shifts because we're going out of quarantine that has been really valuable so this weekend i reminded myself that every day i need to get up i need to write i need to meditate i need to make my coffee in my french press which has its own cathartic you know, um, process along with it and just really focus on like, if those are the three things that I can control that day, that's great. And that's a good start. So I would encourage everyone, you know, when you, if you're feeling anxious about the world reopening, really focus on what you can control. And also, you know, remember that your boundaries are yours and whatever you want to do as far as um, as far as what you're comfortable with, um, that is yours to control. And I know that unfortunately that there's some people who have, um, you know, their, their jobs are maybe not being the most, uh, you know, careful and considerate as far as people returning to work. Um, and I just have, I have so much, um, sympathy and I'm sending you all the love if you are in that, you know, situation. Um, but if you're not in that situation, if you can control um, as far as when you leave your house and for what, I just encourage you to remind yourself that those are still boundaries that you yourself control. Um, you know, I have friends who have started hanging out 
together. And that's not something that I'm necessarily comfortable with yet. And I have made it very clear that these are my boundaries and I'm, um, I'm not willing to break them yet. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's, again, that's something that you can control. Um, and that goes back to the breathing. Like all of this is just, you know, breathing deeply is just reminding yourself, you know, like who you are as a person, that you can control yourself, um, it, at, at least in some sense, and uh, and those those are very valuable things. Um, so now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about performance anxiety in general because this is something you know specifically actors obviously have this experience, um, but I think that it very much goes into um, a lot of different people's experiences um, because, you know, sorry, that's my dog, if you guys can hear him. Um, you know, I think that if, if, uh, if you are someone who has to give presentations at work um, or if you just have to interact with, you know, people in an external way and you're not um, any sort of, you know, yeah, external, um, uh, interaction that you have with the world, that is, is definitely something that like, as an actor, I have experienced that. And I want to give you guys some of my tips and tricks for how I get through things. And so I thought that it might be valuable to you guys as well. Um, again, I am always up for, you know, questions or comments. So if you have a suggestion for how you get through performance anxiety, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, and we can continue having, uh, this really great discussion. Um, so number one, the, th the number one thing, if you are feeling performance anxiety, <sighs> oh, there's my dog. Think me, bud. Um, is to focus on practice. Um, to, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pick him up for a second, guys. Ugh. Okay. This is my dog. This is Phineas. <sighs> He is someone, I got him um, uh, like three years ago now. And this is something I've talked about on some of my other lives, that if you are feeling um, like your own life has, um, oh, thanks bud, has, um, you know, lost purpose in some sense, if you're really finding it difficult to, you know, grasp on to positive things in your day, I strongly recommend um, getting a pet or a plant or something that relies on you. There is, you know, so many studies about the importance of caring for something. And um, and that can be, yeah, anything. It can be a dog. It can be a fish. It can be a ficus. It can be a cactus. You know, anything like that. It's so valuable to have something that um, you know is relying on you um, and that gives you unconditional love. because. Even plants, when they're growing, they're showing you that uh, they appreciate you, you know, nurturing them. And um, so, yeah, sidebar, dogs are awesome. Um, anyways, um, so going back to performance anxiety, you know, the number one thing that helps is preparation. Um, whether that is for a role on set, like I go, you know, have, or it's a presentation at work, or it's a big meeting, or it's a, um, you know, job interview, anything like that, that all is tied with performance anxiety. And I think that it is so um, important to recognize that having uh, doing additional research about what you're going to be experiencing is very valuable. Um, again, going back to what I was, uh, you know, saying earlier about like the like the chickens never experiencing, you know, hawks before, and when the hawks flew over their cages in the lab, they started to freak out. When I heard that study, it made so much sense to me about all of the different, you know. Um, fight or flight mechanisms that are built in our body. And for me, having that knowledge really opened things up for me in a very different way. And so, and I think, you know, some people commented about how interesting that, you know, study was. And I think that, you know, research like that is really, really valuable. 
Same goes for something that you're preparing for. The more that you research, the more that you're going to be prepared for whatever comes at you. Um, you know, as, as an actor, of course, we are, you know, given a script that we need to follow, um, usually, you know, very closely. Sometimes there's a little bit of leeway with that. But often, you know, it's really just about following something very specific and delivering those specific lines. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of experience with this. Uh, I've, I've done several movies where I was the lead and also producing. And so I would have, you know, 60, 70 pages to memorize. And the thing that was the most valuable always was preparation. Um, and so, again, that can also be with any sort of preparation that you have. And again, it just allows you to sort of settle into the moment and remind yourself that everything's gonna be okay, that you're controlling what you can control, and that is you know, your memorization and your preparation, and that's the most important thing, is focusing on those things. Um, something else that's very valuable as far as performance anxiety is to limit your caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's such a bummer because when I um, I had another live a couple weeks ago where we talked um, about art and anxiety and, and uh, depression, anxiety and how to work through things and then also just, um, you know, asking the hard questions and all that sort of stuff. And I mentioned on there as well, limiting caffeine and everyone was like, no, but unfortunately, caffeine obviously is a stimulant. And again, when we go into anxiety, when we go into fight or flight, the thing that immediately starts to, um, to spiral us is our breathing gets faster and our heart rate starts to get faster. Both of those things also happen when you drink caffeine or eat a lot of sugar. So again, it's very important to um, recognize that that could be adding to your anxiety. So if you're, you know, feeling very anxious at a specific time of day or after a specific food, I would strongly encourage you to maybe change that food for a little bit and see if that makes a difference. Because, you know, with um, with all of the you know, breadth of different, you know, foods that we are now, that we now have access to. Um, I think we forget sometimes to just go back to the basics as far as food is concerned. And I think that we forget how um, impactful food is on our own, you know, genetic makeup and how, how it relates to us. And of course, we think about food in relation to like, being fit or being healthy or, you know, any of those sorts of things. But we also need to remember that your brain, your mental health is directly tied to your physical health. And those two things are very much, um, you know, connected. And both of those things are very much impacted by what we bring into our bodies. So just remember that. Think about limiting your coffee or your sugar. Um, and obviously drink a lot of water, you know all of those things, um, all the things that you should be doing in order to, again, maintain a healthy body will also help you maintain a healthy mind. Um, so I'm gonna drink some water, let's say it. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing that really helps me when I am uh, have performance anxiety is to think about how my performance or what I'm doing is going to positively impact the people who are viewing it. And this, you know, if, in theater, when you perform in theater, you have the immediate gratification of someone cheering or, um, you know, clapping at the end of a monologue or a dance or, a, you know, performance of some kind. Um, in, in other things that that is not the case. Obviously, if you're filming a TV show or um, a movie, people will not be experiencing that um, medium until afterwards. And you, you know, probably will not actually, uh, you know, see people's reactions to your work. But I think that it is very valuable to still imagine what you are bringing to the world and what happiness or important storytelling you are doing 
in order to impact others. Um, you know, for example, this film that I have that came out last week, um, it's, it's called Here While. We filmed it up in Oregon, in Portland, Oregon. And this film was very important because it focuses on a very specific um, topic that had a very strong impact on people in the community. There was a lot of people who, you know, while we were filming, were talking to us about how much already this story being told was impacting them and it hadn't even come out yet. And that was really, really valuable as a way to sort of shift my focus from the immediate things that could potentially go wrong to the things that were the most important, which was to bring uh, this story to life. And that was the most important thing. You know, I think that if, if you're having a, um, if you're having a uh, job interview or, um, you know, giving a presentation at work, anything like that, it's again, just really important to remind yourself that you need to pull that focus off of your fear and instead focus on the enjoyment or the knowledge, um, whatever you are giving to your uh, to your audience members. Um, and one thing that's really valuable to do with that, again, I'm going to repeat this, but again, is to, you know, hold on to something, ground yourself with something physical. Um, yeah, thank you so much. That's that's our film here a while. Um, it, it stars Anna Camp and Joe Latrulio from Brooklyn Nine-Nine um, and Anna Camp from the Pitch Perfect movies. Um, and it's it's a really, really valuable um, story and it means a lot to me. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so going back to, again, if you are feeling performance anxiety and, and the thing that you want to do at this point is to think about um, the enjoyment that you're gonna give to others. I would again encourage you to hold on physically to something, um, ground yourself, close your eyes, breathe in and out through your nose, um, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And then to, um, to focus on like positive, uh, the positive feelings that you're going to be giving to someone. Um, and something that works really well for me is to actually think in colors. And I know that sounds weird, but um, I often think about like if I want to, you know, think about the positive feelings that I'm going to be giving to others through this performance, I will think about like a gold gold energy. I don't know. For me, that is the thing that always comes up for me. Um, and it might be something completely different for you, but it's, it's very fascinating if you just like spend time in your brain to just realize what's going on in there. Um, and again, you know, something that's actually really fascinating is the importance of breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Um, you know, lots of people do that. It's like a very, you know, big yogi um, thing where they do, you know, fire breathing through your nose. There's a, there's a lot of that focus on, on that um, breathing pattern. And one of the reasons why that's so valuable is the fact that your nose is actually already a filter. Um, like, obviously, the hair in your nose, as well as just your nasal passages in general, are built like an air filter. So when you're breathing through your nose and then out your mouth, you're actually um, filtering some of the toxins from the air and from your surroundings out of your body. Um, and of course, that's really valuable because, you know, as, as our world is, and we have, you know, if you live in a city, we're constantly breathing you know, smoke and, um, you know, car stuff, <laughs> car gases, <laughs> you know, all of those sorts of things. And it's really valuable to be breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth because it actually is helping filter out some of those toxins, which obviously will then help you. Um, another thing I want to focus on is negative self-talk and self-doubt. Um, and let's talk about the fact that number one, that is universal. That is something that everyone feels. And it is important to um, really acknowledge that those, that that negative self-talk is not helping you, it is not valuable, and that it really doesn't have a space in your brain. Um, 
something that my therapist has taught me. And again, therapy, so important. Um, I talk about this every live that I do. Um, I have an incredible therapist that I've been working with for a couple years now. And I really credit so much of my own learning experience to working with her and, um, and, you know, working through the different resources that like resources that she's provided me that I've then learned from, you know, now I, you know, tell her about podcasts that I love that I listen to. And we sort of have a really fun little dialogue with that going now. But, um, you know, going back to this negative self-talk, I think, you know, one thing that's important and that she's taught me is to not necessarily um, downplay that um, that uh, negative self-talk, uh, like whatever, whatever thought comes into your brain, don't immediately say, um, oh, you're wrong. Oh, that's, that's incorrect. Like, like, screw you brain, stop thinking that because it's still your brain that is, that is giving you that, that thought. So it's important to not necessarily be like, you're wrong, because that's, again, providing more negative self-talk. That self-talk like negative self-talk on top of negative self-talk. Instead, it's important to acknowledge it and go, okay, that's what you're telling me right now. Maybe not the nicest thing. Um, let's see if I can reframe that or process it differently. Um, and I have found that instead of trying to push down my negative self-talk, instead I just process it and sort of try to reframe it and just give it love, <laughs> basically, that it has really helped me start to shift my thinking in some ways. Um, Valentina says that when she experiences attack of anxiety, um, that you lose a sense of orientation, have a gap of memories. Um, it's good for you to inform people who is with you or take a moment to stop, breathe, and calm down. Yeah, thank you, Valentina, for sharing that. That's very, very valuable. Um, again, like it's so important to remind yourself, again, that you are not in fight or flight. That is why it is so important to take a moment, yeah, stop, breathe, and calm down. Um, and Valentina, that's so wonderful that that's something that you now know about yourself. And so you can, you can now, you know, share um, your experience with people around you who can support you so that you will, you know, have that safe space provided by your friends and family. Um, again, you know, it's it, this is my own you know, work with anxiety and everything like that has been something I've really been focusing on over the past couple years for myself. And I certainly know my own triggers now. Like I certainly know when things are going to start to put me in a negative space and, and I'm going to start to have, you know, some sort of spiral episode. I can now realize what's happening and have that knowledge that I also, again, need to stop ground myself on something physical to remind myself that I am safe, that I am in a place that has like physical walls, physical doors, you know, something like put your hands on the ground so that you feel that, you know, physical sense that you are okay. Um, and, uh, and then, and then just breathe through it. Um, and Valentina also says, you know, you're not your thoughts. If you cannot stop it, just try not to identify with them. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's so many different um, again, there's so many different ways that we, uh, you know, work with our own brains and our own mental health. And that's why it's so important to have your own, you know, process your own, um, therapist that you work with. Um, and, you know, I know that some people, you know, talk about how they may not have the resources or the, or the finances to necessarily see a therapist. And I would strongly encourage you to try and challenge that belief because, there's a lot of incredible resources out there and they're growing. Um, you know, there's all sorts of apps now that you can have some sort of, you know, uh, subscription for um, therapy online. Um, and also most therapists have some sort of, um, uh, you know, like program where it's a sliding scale where you can basically say like, this is what I can afford. And then they will, you know, let you know whether or not you can be slotted into them, into their, you know, thing. Another thing is like here in the U.S. in anyways, um, uh, therapy students or 
students, people who are, who are becoming therapists, who are becoming psychologists, they obviously have to have a certain number of hours in order to become a licensed therapist. And because of that, they go through training programs and or they go, go through teaching programs where they, you know, need to, um, you know, talk to uh, their talk to patients. And sometimes it will be free or again, very discounted um, because they also need to like, you know, learn important processes. And what they'll do is they'll, you know, take notes about your session, about what they said to you and et cetera. And then they'll go back to their own teacher and learn, you know, what they what they can do differently next time, et cetera, stuff like that. So there's a lot of, um, you know, incredible resources out there as far as therapy is concerned. But again, I think it's really important to find whatever therapeutic practice works for you and whatever is the thing that will um, get you out of your own self-talk, anxiety, depressive state, you know, whatever. Um, I, I, you know, again, going back to negative self-talk for me personally, when I have these 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 negative thoughts that come into my brain, I yes, I acknowledge that they're not my thoughts, but I also or I acknowledge that my thoughts are not my reality. But I also acknowledge the fact that my brain is still having those feelings, and there's something else going on there as far as it's actually my own um, fear, you know, or it's my own insecurities about something happening, um, and so even if it's maybe not necessarily the best way that I want to realize that I'm feeling fearful about something, it's still valuable to, you know, acknowledge my brain and acknowledge that that is what is actually, you know, going on there. Um, again, let's go back to, uh, you know, going back to the things that I was saying. So, really valuable as far as performance anxiety is to number one, be prepared, practice, know what you are performing, what you are, what situation that you're going into. You know, the more that we can control as far as the research that we've done and anything like that, the more that we will um, feel grounded and, um, and really secure in, in our feelings and what we're presenting to people. And that goes for an actor's performance. It goes for a job interview. It goes for a presentation at work. It goes for a conversation that you're going to be having with your partner um, or a friend. You know, like there's so many, you know, different ways where performance anxiety can come to fruition. And I think it's important to acknowledge that all of those things are very valid, um, that your feelings are valid. And that um, all of that, um, you know, at least if you can come to the table with a little bit of understanding about where you are, where the other person is, um, where your audience is, like anything like that, um, I find that really valuable. Um, again, limit your caffeine and sugar. Uh, let's remind ourselves that our brains, still a part of our body, mental health, and physical health are very much tied. Um, and if we drink too much caffeine, if we eat too much sugar, you know, those things can definitely put us into more depressive states. Um, it can certainly heighten our anxiety. Again, anxiety is very much about our breath, our, our breath speeding up and our heart speeding up. And all of those things are just exacerbated by excess sugar and excess caffeine. So Again, know your own limits, know your own boundaries with what you're putting into your body, but also just really take a look at what you're eating and make sure that it is not something that's going to, um, you know, contribute negatively to uh, your own mental, mental health and well-being. Um, again, my favorite one is to focus on what you are giving to the audience, like what, what positive, you know, feedback or um, uh, emotions that you are giving to someone else. I find that incredibly valuable to just think about all the positivity um, that I'm bringing into the world by sharing, you know, a story or a film or a character or a conversation. Like, I really find focusing on the way that I'm giving back to be very helpful for me. And it reminds myself well, why I'm doing it. Um, because, you know, being in this industry can be really difficult and being in any industry can be really difficult. Um, and then again, avoid thoughts that practice or that um, produce self-doubt. Um, yeah, 
Live in the moment, Dana. I love that. Um, definitely just like focusing on the things that are bringing you happiness that potentially can bring other people happiness. I think that's so valuable. Um, we just have a few minutes left. So I just want to, again, focus on uh, what we're all feeling right now as far as our anxiety with the world opening back up. Um, because again, as I said earlier in the talk, if you weren't with us for this, um, I am feeling so much anxiety around everything opening up in some sense. And it was really valuable for myself this weekend to really write down where that anxiety was coming from and to acknowledge the fact that I still have a lot of control about what I am doing, who I am seeing, where I am going, all of that, even if the rules are lifted in some sense, I don't necessarily need to open myself up if I'm not comfortable for that yet. Um, I think that, you know, again, putting boundaries upon yourself and sharing those boundaries with your friends and family is so incredibly valuable. You know, you just, um, everyone has different levels of their own uh, comfort with things. And I think that we've all seen that in this quarantine and in these past few months to see how people function in different scenarios. And so it's totally fine if right now you're feeling like me and it's like, I'm still don't wanna leave my house. I'm going to the store and buying two weeks worth of food. I am still in my house. I, I'm not comfortable leaving yet and acknowledging that like, that's okay and I'm okay and if things change because I get a job or something like that, then I will, you know, address it at that point. But right now, my anxiety needs to remind myself that I can control those things and that's okay. Um, so again, set boundaries for yourself, share those boundaries with others. Um, remember that your feelings are valid, that your brain and your body is 100% connected. And so if you're feeling anxious, it's just going to, you know, um, create negative feelings in your body. And that's not something that we want, obviously. So um, again, I so much enjoyed chatting with you all. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Um, Again, performance and anxiety, it's something that we all experience. Um, I encourage you to you know, share your experiences with others. Come check out More Than You See. Come check out our digital art show, as well as just the community that we have going on there. Um, it's really incredible, all of the different things that we are doing there. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And you know, obviously, come check out all the other really incredible stuff that The Mighty has going on. Um, I find that resources like this um, and the resources that I have on More Than You See are really um, very important to like help me get through the day. So again, thank you so much everyone for joining me. Um, my name is Deborah Lee Smith. I am an actor and a producer. So wonderful to hear that, Dana. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys again next time. Thanks. Bye.